Yo, big announcement, big announcement. We are moving all streams to Twitch and TikTok. We're gonna be doing dual streams from now on. We will not be streaming on YouTube anymore. For any of you guys who be joining those live streams or watch those live streams, I'm still gonna post the live streams on my channel. I'll cut it up into, into the consumable bits. But uh, yeah, dude, live streams are moving to Twitch. My Twitch channel is CamoCarl underscore. I'll put it up on the screen for you guys. I'll also put a link down in the description for you guys. But yeah, dude, making the switch, making some changes. I know I've always streamed here, but uh, we're going to try some new stuff. Probably move over there. Everything's a lot easier to stream on over there. It's a lot more streamer friendly. But yeah, guys, before we get into the video, I just want to say that. I'll leave everything down in the description. Let's get right into the video. I'm about to be crying up in the booth here. Oh, okay. I'm locked to this log, apparently. I like the hands. Reminds me of Team Fortress 2. What in the world? What's up, guys? And welcome to a new series on the channel, dude. We're going to run through Firewatch. I remember when this game came out out which was years ago this is a little something different that we're trying i really hope you guys like it let me know in the comments what you guys think of it but yeah guys we're gonna jump right into it right from the title screen dude let's go firewatch dude i am so excited i remember when this game came out and I, I was too young to like play it uh because i didn't have any game systems back then but dude i'm so excited I don't know how long this is going to take, but I'm really excited to play it. And it's, uh, it's very cinematic. So I might also dip my camera out at certain times. Just so we can enjoy uh, this together. Boulder, Colorado. Dude, I've been there. Not in 1975, though. You see Julia. <gasps> All right, I can read that pretty fast. Oops. Continue. Dialogue. Oh, that's my fault. She's about your age, late twenties, laughing with well-dressed professionals and grad students from nearby CU Boulder. You, Henry, are out drinking with your pals. You approach her. You are drunk. What do you know, Major? So, what's your, you know, Major? Oh. Um. That sounds like I'm pretty sloshed regardless. Um. Dude, you're pretty, dude. You, you're pretty. You're pretty, she says coolly. You are not. You are future hangover. This is really but my reading skills to the test. What? You reply confusedly. Someone should buy you a cheeseburger, she said. She flags down a waiter, and one week later, you and Julie, you are Julie's boyfriend. It's going by pretty quick, man. I feel like I did that pretty well. Hello? Look at my little arms, dude. Backpack, pick up. He's got some big old hands. Dude, this looks awesome. That looks like walking zombie numbers. I have the music turned way down. I might turn it back up. You date for over a year. She drives you absolutely nuts. It's great. You move in. You share an apartment near the school with a view of the mountains. You two drink beers out on the deck. You drink beer just about anywhere. Life is good. Julian wants to get a dog. There's a scruffy, undersized beagle. Julie is in love. She wants to bring it home to her class. She wants to bring it with her to class. Sorry. This is... Alright. I'm going to get better reading, I promise. I'm just going to slow down a little bit. There's also an intimidating but gentle-eyed German Shepherd. Nothing bad could happen to Julia while walking this dog. It's bad I you should pick up the beagle she named it bucket you should adopt a shepherd named mayhem all right 
Uh, I know Julia would want to name him Bucket, but I would want to name him Mayhem. The scruffy, uh, Julia's in love with the scruffy beagle. Dude, I... I, dude. I'm gonna go with the beagle just because she wants it. I don't really care about a dog. Bucket's a good dog, and a week later, you totally forgot about the other one. Julia loves him. Man, I should have picked the German Shepherd. Dang. 1979, you talk about... Ah. Uh, you talk out on the deck... It's summer, 9.30 p.m., and the heat still radiates off the high desert. What do you think about kids, she asked. Dude, this whole first episode just can be us making lore. Kids, they're not very smart or good at much. I'm saying if you and I had some, a couple little idiots, that would be pretty good, man. In that case, we should probably get married. Yeah, I would like that, you say. These kids are going to be screwed up enough. It's probably for the best that their parents are hitched. You say she's absolutely right. I feel like what I choose regardless, the story's going to run through the same. Ugh. Ugh. Dude. I like this little truck. I'm a fan of it. Let's crank that music up just a little bit. All right, you heard it from me. If this gets copyrighted dude and there's a ton missing out of it dude the next one will not have music do not forget to check in no fireworks thor thoro fit all right thoroughfare trailhead i swear i can read i have a high school degree Ooh, i can sprint beautiful dude 1980 is Thursday night and Julia is four hours late. She doesn't call. You're worried about getting angrier by the minutes. She walks in after you've gone to bed. Oh, man. She's not quite drunk, but she's clearly been having fun time. You fight when she gets better. Oh, my gosh, dude. Between. What's wrong with me? You fight when she gets between the sheets. You get mad. You ignore her. Just ignore it, man. Do it in the morning. You don't touch each other all night. The next day, you feel guilty for being so angry and ask her about her evening. She says it was great. You hold on to a tiny pill of resentment. You make some coffee and go to work. Dude, how crazy is this? How long is this game? I don't know. Julia still likes to draw. She draws plants from her research. She draws all the places you go. She draws you. You frolic like Victoria's Secret model. That's what I would do, yes. You pose and flex like He-Man. Oh, man, dude. Julie was right. You are very pretty. Dude. I'm getting very attached to Julia. She doesn't even exist. Dude. I like this. Dude, I'm all about this, I'll be honest with you. I like this. It feels like eye candy. Two forks. Eight. Eight more miles! Is this the, the morning? Or are we, is this the evening? If I had a compass, I could tell you. 1982, during the summers, you and Julia enjoy walking bucket at night. There's a festival in town. It brings in folks from far away places. One of them tries to mug you with a knife. Dude, if I had mayhem right now. Bucket gets kicked. No! Julia yells. She gets flustered and has trouble speaking when she is stressed. You confront the attacker. There's some heavy words in here. I beat him in. Your arm gets cut up, but you beat the guy to a pulp. You don't feel very good. You cry your eyes out before the cops show up. Julia asks to take a different path from that day forward. You say, okay, you don't want to go that way either. From then on, you walk by the river. Dude, man, if I had mayhem with me, dang it. Plans to have kids get way laid back by work. Get way laid by work. Way laid. Never heard that word before. Julie gets offered a job at Yale Jails, Connecticut, 2,000 miles away from the great. It's a great job, associate department chair. She wants to move. You absolutely do not uh, convince her not to take the job. Agree. Uh, dude, man, what is this? 
It is a great job in Connecticut, 2,000 miles away. She wants to move. Dude, I would move with her. Convince her not to take the job. Nah, I can't do that, dude. You ask her if she'll commute back and forth. You don't want to move to Connecticut. She says that it'll be hard, but she'll do it for... Do it if you don't move. If you won't move. Tell her not to pass it up if it's what she wants. She agrees. She flies back to Boulder three times each semester. 1985, Julia sent home from Yale on paid leave after having an episode. What? She lost it on colleague for borrowing books that were important to her research. She didn't remember she had happily loaned them to him just two days prior. Dude, she was found crying in the stairwell. You say that maybe you guys should talk to someone about it? You make macaroni and drink wine and try to forget about it. Oh, man. She was found crying in the stairwell. You say that maybe you guys should talk to someone about it. You make macaroni and drink wine and try to forget about it. I don't know, dude. Let's talk to somebody. After seeing multiple doctors and having many tests, they're worried that Julia might be suffering from early onset dementia. She's 41. Oh my goodness. You both decided to keep it secret from now on. That may be, I'm about to be crying up in the booth here. Oh, okay. I'm locked to this log, apparently. I like the hands. Reminds me of Team Fortress 2. What in the world? This is me from the future coming back to read this for you because uh, I figured I'd read it for you. Uh, in only a few months, Henry and I will be in Hawaii and it will be delightful to finally be on an island soaking in the sunshine without having to meet with a colleague hearing bad. Uh, what? Tweed? And a worse attitude. Oh my gosh, I can hardly read that. Whenever, what, Bryant, series, lies, one of his unfounded, oh-so-sure critiques of the work Echo is doing, I want to scream my head off, oh well, just a few more months and he'll be back to Cambridge and I'll be eating a something... With this beef of a man, I bought Henry a new bathing suit, and now he is posing in his birthday suit. I'd say this specimen, uh, what is worth a sketch? Ah, oh my god. Uh, I need to remember to call Susan. I've meant to for three weeks now, and what? Uh, be right. Uh, all right, whatever. That's all you get, man. And I blurted it out because it's a naked man. Enjoy the rest of the video. I'm blocking that out. You guys can't see that. I didn't even get to read any of that. Ah, <laughs> uh, whatever. I'm blocking that out. Bucket is getting older. Julia comments that it's kind of nice because he gets in less trouble around the house. A week later, she goes back to the university. Julia's affliction that gets worse. She can't remember things in class. Her research is in shambles. She drives her car to the next town over for no particular reason and has to be brought home by the police. She is devastated. She is sent home on permanent medical leave. Some days you get the Julia who calls you a dope and your unborn child a little idiots. Other days she get a stranger. I'm about to be crying in the booth right now, bruh. She pulls you into bed and makes love. After five minutes, she goes into a panic, believing her dad is at the door. Dude, we haven't even done anything in this game yet. We tell her family they are crushed and begin to take trips to... Oh my gosh. You tell her family they are crushed and begin to make trips to and from their home in Australia to visit her. For a while, your friends come by with little things to brighten the day. She gets worse. <laughs> you spend your days following Julie around the house. You cannot. You count the seconds between the two weekly visits from Daniel, the nurse. He suggests that Julia could live somewhere else, somewhere with 24-hour care, a home. It sits with you for a couple of months. You are determined to take care of her by yourself. You decide to move her into a full-time care facility. Ah, what are these decisions, dude? These people don't even exist. Ah. <sighs> 
What would I do? I would take care of her. Uh, did we finally get to play the game? My heart can only take so much of this. Dude, this could be a horror game within a second. I like this though, this is nice. Very nice actually. Whoa! Dude. Oh, is that another path right there? Wait, where am I? Oh no, I just did a 360 because my sensitivity is so high. Oh, I'm sorry, I was looking at the wrong thing. <laughs> See ya! It is impossibly hard. The worst is when you get mad at her, like when she tries to cook her own food. You can't do anything without her, and she can't do anything without you. Dude! When she, when she goes to sleep, you stay up for a few hours drinking on the deck, watching baseball in the summer, college basketball in the winter, drinking then too. You start going out after you put her to bed. The first time you do it, you worry about her getting up and walking around while you were gone. You put a chair in front of her bedroom door. That's horrible. You trust that she sleeps like a rock. I'm not gonna I'm even. Oh my gosh, dude! I'm not gonna put a chair in front of the door. She's gonna get out. You go to the same bar at the boring end of Pearl Street. It's nice there. Over time, you tell Sheila, the bartender, everything. It's a huge weight off. You are home and in bed by 1 a.m. a couple nights a week. You look forward to those nights. One night you are stopped at a DOI checkpoint. You blow it. Dang, dude. Point 10 or take it to jail for the night. You consider trying to hide it, but you tell your sister-in-law, Susan. Julia's parents take the next plane from Australia. They can't believe the state your house is in. Then they tell you Julie is coming to live with them. You don't argue. You say you'll visit soon. A few weeks go by. Summer is coming and you see an ad in the paper for a job. We've been reading for like 15 minutes. You take it. Fades to black. Ugh. Enter the lookout tower, dude. That was that. Oh, red light. Run. This game is straight eye candy. My eyes are like, nom, 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 nom. I love it, dude. I love this. I just love that. I love this animation. I'm a sucker for animation, dude. Huge sucker. Imagine something just right there just comes sprinting. All right. I don't. It's not a horror game though. Apparently, there's one jump scare in the whole game, but it's not a horror game. Which is di it's very different to the channel. Oh my gosh, are all the windows boarded up? Turn on the power. I can't see. Oh. That was a, a very aggressive slap. Hello, Two Forks Tower. Oh. Hello. Backwards. There you go. It's a picture of a raccoon. Hold left shift to activate the radio. That's not that. Hello. Um, hello? Whoever this is? It's Henry, oh, right? Look. Yeah. I'm Delilah. Yeah, that's what the guy said on the phone. So, what's wrong with you? Excuse me? People take this job to get away from something. So, what's wrong? What's wrong with you? That's a great idea. Go ahead. Look, I just hiked for two days, so I don't really follow two whatever days. he's doing right now. You take a stab at what's wrong with me. Fine, then can I sleep forever? Sure, buddy. Okay, now go ahead. Oh, oh I could just not reply. You've killed three ex-husbands. You're rebelling against mom. Nobody back. Home. There you go. Okay, uh, you've killed three husbands. You're a black widow, and you're just out here until the heat dies down, and then you'll kill again. Ooh, very good. Bravo, Henry. I sleep now? Not quite. Now you. Okay. Good night. Bye. Let's see. I don't know anything about you, but nine times out of ten, folks out here simply got dumped. Huh. Is that it? Close. Oh, no. Good night. <laughs> good night. Welcome to the job. Firewatch. Day one. Dude. 
That was a lot. <laughs> All right, guys, that's going to be it for part one of Firewatch. I know part one was straight lore. The rest of the episodes aren't going to be like this. We're actually going to be walking around and grabbing stuff. But, yeah, guys, I really hope you enjoyed this. If you made it this far in the video, say, I want more. Bro, if you say that, I know you made it this far in the video. I super appreciate you guys. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate you, and I'll see you in the next one.